Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and today I want to do a video about two legendary acts, Guns N' Roses and NWA and both bands have a little bit of history with each other as well and I want to talk about that history because I know uh, every time I talk to Jeff he always mentions that he's like an NWA fan so I thought it would be a cool video to do a true story about. So both of these groups broke out big in the late 80s and uh, Axel actually did an interview with New York Magazine back in 2006 where he talked about NWA. So he said, we thought we were so badass. Then NWA came out rapping about this world where you walk out of your house and you get shot. It was just so clear what stupid little white boy posers we were. It was like, all right, we can give up the act. If you're talking about which lifestyle is more hardcore, the one where you get shot always wins. And Rose even started wearing an NWA cap in videos and during live performances. And Dr. Dre said in 2007 that the biggest shock for him was when he saw Axl Rose in the video with an NWA hat. He said we were like, what the F? We were still selling records out of our car. That would soon change because their album Straight Outta Compton would go on to sell more than 2 million copies on a $12,000 investment. And Straight Outta Compton would go on to be the first album that would go double platinum with no airplay and no major tour support. And soon Guns N' Roses and NWA began kicking it together and bonding at barbecues. I became friends with Dr. Dre, Eazy-E, and Ice Cube from NWA. Uh, Duff McKagan remembered in his autobiography, It's So Easy and Other Lies. He said, I had seen the sensationalized reaction guns got by presenting an unedited look at our lives on Appetite, and white boys in Hollywood weren't exactly a marginalized group. The glimpse of street life presented by NWA was a true shock to the system. Those guys lived hard too, and we had some great parties up at my house. So Duff McKagan did an interview uh, back in uh, 2011 promoting his book and the interviewer actually asked him about partying with NWA. So the interviewer said, you briefly mentioned in the book that NGNR used to party with NWA. I don't really have a question. I'm just trying to picture that in my mind. To which Duff laughed. He said, yeah, it was crazy. It was an easy sort of friendship because they were the them of North White LA and they were the us of South LA and we recognize it as such. I love that band and they liked us. I just remember having a party over at my house. Like, do you guys want to come over to my party? And we just had the best effing barbecue with kegs of beer and a mixture of all kinds of people. So the interviewer said, so for the record, you're only giving me a barbecue and, I, and diverse people at a Guns N' Roses NWA party, which Duff laughed. I'm not going to ever tell anything beyond that. Let's just say it was an easy friendship. And the same year, Duff did another interview with Revolver magazine and the topic of NWA came up. So he basically said, I was asked, you've been sober since 1994. Why did you write a song called Cocaine? He said, it's a tongue-in-cheek song about me and 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 about Of course, my alcohol intake went up. Everyone would be like, dude. And I'd be like, well, at least I quit cocaine. So that song is about my state of mind. Empty bottle of Vicodin, the dirty clothes I slept in. I hit a gun in a darkened place. A simple, sh a short arm's length the way I was paranoid. And the interviewer says, is this true? He said, yeah, man, I had guns everywhere. And the interviewer asked, did, any did anybody ever... And Duff said, ever get shot? No, I was just paranoid. It was the 80s in LA. We hung out in the, in the seedier underbelly, then add drugs to that, and hanging out with NWA guys, iced tea and stuff like that. Uh, there were always guys around ready to protect my house and stuff, and it fed into my paranoia. They were like, F, are you strapped? I'm like, um, they're like, well, we can hook you up, and I started buying guns. And the interviewer asked, did you hang out with NWA often? To which Duff said, yeah, all the guys, they were like the other band like Guns N' Roses in LA, to be quite honest. They were telling the same story we were telling, and we both recognized that. We were fans of each other's bands. Were we the tightest buddies hanging out? No, but we had parties and stuff together and hung out. Fast forward to 2015, Duff McKagan's releasing his second book, uh, how to be a man and other illusions and there's one part of the book if you guys have read it where he lists all his favorite his basically favorite albums of all time and one of them is nwa straight out of compton he said there are a few timeless rap records from this era but nwa was more than just a band for the time they had a message and found the sound to carry it forth bad is all hell so back in 2016 some of the nwa members reminisced on hanging with guns and roses and the failed attempt at touring together so had a few factors aligned back in the day, it appears NWA would have gone on tour with Guns N' Roses basically at the behest of Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. So Rollingstone.com published an extensive interview uh, reflecting on NWA's 1991 album. Amid the piece, the following passage on a failed attempt to have the two outfits tour together was shared. So it says, Ren brought the title Appetite for Destruction to the group for what would become a funky, syncopated, P 
VPN to violence chaos. I came up with that from Guns N' Roses, he says. We hung out with them one time. They had a show at the Forum in Inglewood, which was back in 1991, and we went to hang out with them before and after the show. We had heard Axel was an NWA fan. I remember having a headache for three days. That music was so loud, Yellow said. They was really cool, Ren recalls. I remember talking to Axel backstage in the dressing room, and he started rapping. I can't remember how it went, but he busted a rhyme. We were supposed to do a couple shows with them, but our manager got too greedy, Yella says. They wanted to give us $25,000 for 10 minutes, but our management wanted $50,000, so it didn't work. We might have ended up doing a whole bunch of shows with them. And then manager Jerry Heller tells Rolling Stone he does not recall a solid offer for Guns N' Roses shows, but that he probably would have asked for more than $50,000 as he thought they were worth it. Now, there's an interview with former NWA manager Jerry Heller on YouTube where he talks a bit about Guns N' Roses and the impact that having Guns N' Roses sort of support NWA had. So I've linked to it down below. The audio quality and video quality is not very good, but if you guys are fans, you can go check it out down below. Now let's go back to 1988 when Guns N' Roses released GNR Lies. This is the first time that I've been able to find where Axel actually brings up the group NWA. Now GNR Lies was hit with much controversy because of the track One in a Million. The song's lyrics cause controversy amongst many groups including accusations of homophobia, nativism, and racism were all leveled against Guns N' Roses lead singer Axl Rose. So music critic John Perellis noted that with one in a million on GNR Lies, the band tailored its image to appeal to white, heterosexual, nativist prejudices, denouncing blacks, immigrants, and gays while uh, coyly apologizing to those who may take offense in the album's notes. So Axel did an interview in Rolling Stone in 1989 and he explained the lyrics. He said, I use words like police and the N-word because you're not allowed to use the N-word. Why can black people go up to each other and say the N-word, but a white guy does it and all of a sudden it's a big put down. I don't like boundaries of any kind. I don't like being told what I can say and what I can't say. I use the N-word because it's a word that describes something that's basically a pain in your life, a problem. The N-word doesn't necessarily mean black. Doesn't John Lennon have a song, Women is the N-word of the world? There's a rap group, NWA. I mean, they're proud of that word. More power to them. Guns N' Roses ain't bad. NWA is bad. As the 80s wound down, the volatility that earned them such massive success spelled the end for NWA and Guns N' Roses. So after an acrimonious split over royalties, Ice Cube left NWA in 1989. Undaunted, NWA released an album in 1991 which contained the song Appetite for Destruction. Aside from Dr. Dre's blossoming producing talents, it's arguably the worst rap album to ever debut at number two on the Billboard charts. Easy e went on to alienate a good portion of the NWA fanbase by burying the hatchet, sort of, with LAPD Chief Daryl Gates and showing up at a Republican fundraising That was hosted by George Herbert Walker Bush. Apparently Easy liked the way that the 41st president handled the first Iraq war. Now there was an interview that Easy e did, which you guys can see here, where he talked about some of his favorite bands and he mentions Guns N' Roses. This shot you listen to just, just rap? About, nah. You listen to rock and roll? Everything. Everything. What's like Heavy your favorite metal. rock band? What's like a rock band you like? Rock band. Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses? You don't have a problem with Guns N' Roses? Nah. Cool. So the same year that User Illusion came out, it was allegedly rumored that both uh, NWA and Guns N' Roses had recorded a track together called The Yellow Road of Compton, but it was never released. And in 1995, Easy e died of AIDS at the age of 31. So in 2008, Axel did a question and answer on one of the Guns N' Roses fan sites, and uh, he was actually asked about the collaboration with NWA. So he was asked, did you do a song with Easy e in the early 90s? I read it somewhere. I think it would have been pretty cool. Did you hang out with Easy e ever? What was the cool moment about hanging out with NWA? He also said that Easy e recorded with Slash and Duff. He really wanted to attack the media over attacking me for one in a million. There wasn't really any easy on it. I wasn't there. He gave me the tape to consider. It sounded a bit like the other guys doing body count. The idea was okay, but the track wasn't really there, and it felt like uh, it would get more heat than the track could stand up to. Only hung out a couple times after the show with any of them. Was glad I got to meet Easy. So Dr. Dre did an interview back in 2015 where he said that Axl Rose wearing the NWA cap made him realize hip-hop had legends and I finally made it. So the member of the pioneering group admitted that Guns N' Roses frontman's style choice helped him appreciate the success. So Dr. Dre uh, was doing an interview where he admitted that Axl Rose helped him see that they had finally made it. Asked when he first knew they were more than just local stars, he told Billboard, when I saw Axl Rose wearing an NWA cap in one of his videos, which he's referring to as Live and Let Die. 
Now, Axel would also be spotted elsewhere wearing an NWA hat, as he was also known to be a fan of hip-hop music, and he also sometimes wore a Public Enemy shirt on stage. The best example I could think of is when Guns N' Roses, I think it was played their first show after the St. Louis riot in 1991 in Dallas, and you can see Axel wearing a Public Enemy shirt here. And in 2015, uh, Straight Outta Compton was released. It was a story of NWA. Some people were expecting some sort of Axl Rose mention or reference to him, but sadly there was no mention of Axel in the movie. Now, the same year, Ice Cube actually tweeted out this photo, which you've seen previously in the video, of him and Axl Rose. This photo is supposedly from 1989. So fast forward to 2016, Guns N' Roses are announced that they're going to be playing Coachella. And the same year the Guns N' Roses are playing Coachella, Ice Cube is playing Coachella as well. And they did a partial um, NWA reunion. Ice Cube brought Dr. Dre out on stage. And that basically does it for my look back at the Guns N' Roses true story of them and NWA. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Were you guys fans of both bands? You obviously are probably fans of Guns N' Roses, but were you fans of NWA and bands like Public Enemy or groups like Public Enemy? Comment down below and let me know. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the content of this video. And be sure to hit the subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And just stay up to date on the latest Guns N' Roses news. And be sure to follow me on social media, guys. The links to my social media channels are down below. Take care.